Number 89, Chris Jericho vs. Rey Mysterio IC title match The Bash 2009. Chris Jericho and Rey Mysterio enjoyed great matches dating back to their time in WCW over a cruiserweight championship. However, they never established a true rivalry until 2009. By this point, Jericho was at his best as an arrogant heel that wore suits and insulted fans with big words. He was obsessed with t taking off Rey Mysterio's mask. But not only was the mask the focal point of the feud, but so was the Intercontinental title, similar to Ray vs. Eddie in WCW. This personal element is what added into an already spectacular match on paper. They turned back the clock a decade and put on a match that is a classic in both of their match libraries. Jericho accomplished both of his goals of unmasking Mysterio and winning back-to-back -back international championship. Number 88, Money in the Bank Ladder Match, WrestleMania 21. These days, Money in the Bank has become a staple in WWE. Arguably, it has been his taking place of Survivor Series. Because we have been treated to many good to great MITB matches and cash-ins. However, nothing compares to the original, which took place at WrestleMania 21. The concept of winning a briefcase to become number one contender for a world title originated with the names like Edge, Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, Shelton Benjamin, Christian, and Kane. Shelton Benjamin set the standard of the creativity for MITB in the best match. Ultimately, it has been the only fitting that the ultimate opportunist, Edge, would seize the briefcase and set the path for becoming the main event and perennial world champion. Number 87, Shawn Michaels vs. Ric Flair, career threatening match WrestleMania 24. Student vs. teacher, Shawn Michaels grew up watching Ric Flair and wanted to be like him. HBK used elements of Flair's career character and added his own twist. When it comes to great in-ring performers and showmen, you can say that Sean was Rick's successor in the 90s. That is why it only made sense for Flair to end his career with the man that only that not only admired him, but the same man that is forever synonymous with WrestleMania. That would be none other than Mr. WrestleMania Shawn Michaels. This was the match that told the greatest story of them all that night. Sean went to, from being a kid in San Antonio that wanted to be like Ric Flair to sending his hero into retirement. This was the best match that Flair had during his run in the 2000s. Michael put the nail in Flair's coffin with an I'm sorry I love you sweet chin music for the victory. Number 86, Brock Lesnar vs. John Cena, WWE Championship Super Slam 2014. Coming fresh off breaking The Undertaker's iconic and mystic WrestleMania streak, Brock Lesnar was the natural choice to be the number one contender for the WWE World Heavyweight title. Following his injury of Daniel Bryan, the WWE title was vacated for the six-man ladder match at Money in the Bank. John Cena won the vacated WWE title and became the 15th World Champion. The stage was set to take on the beast of the Suplex City and Super Slam. Brock dedicated and annihilated Cena. It looks like John took Daniel's place as Lesnar's punching bag. Brock unleashed a fury of 16 German suplexes. Cena put up very little offense in this match, but it was nothing against Terminator Brock. Super Cena's kryptonite is clearly a German suplex, and Lesnar was Doomsday. After 16 German suplexes and two F5s, Brock Lesnar was the new WWE Champion. This is an all-time classic just for how Lesnar dominated Cena throughout the match. This was the best way to make up for the match at Extreme Rules 2012. Doomsday Lesnar conquered Superman Cena. 85. Triple H vs. Chris Jericho Last Man Standing Match Fully Loaded 2000 By 2000, Triple H was truly on top of his game, pun intended. The game was at his best as the quintessential villain of wrestling. He was the ultimate heel that made you despise him. Coming off a great run as WWF champion, the game was firing all cylinders. On the other hand, his latest rival, Chris Jericho, was in a transitional phase of his career. The transplant from WCW had established himself as a world-class ring technician with a flair for a great promos, but lacked the hard edge that fans were looking for. That was until he went toe to toe with Triple H, the same way that Trips displayed his aggressive side against Mick Foley. Y2J showed his resilience against the cerebral assassin in a last man standing match at No Mercy. 
Since Jericho enjoys using Spinal Tap and other rock references, he turned his intensity all the way up to 11 with his combination of fist and chair shots. Jericho took everything that Triple H threw at him, and he still kept going until the end. The game won, but Jericho made a statement that he could hang with the very best in the main event of the Attitude Era. Number 84. Sami Zayn vs. Adrian Neville, NXT TakeOver R Evolution Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville took NXT to another level. The card itself was already great, but this match is what carried the show and put that year's Hell in a Cell PPV to shame. Zayn vs. Neville was a career vs. title match for the NXT Championship. This match had the classic high-flying intensity that kept fans hooked on their every moment. Sami fought with a passion and a never-say-die attitude. The storytelling was very accurate, and Zayn gave his all in his match. Sami threw everything at Neville, from the blue thunder bomb to the exploder suplex, to finally have the hell of a kick to finish off his opponent and save his career with a win at NXT title. Number 83, Kevin Owens vs Finn Balor NXT Championship Beast in the East. The WWE Network exclusive special Beast in the East took place on the 4th of July in Tokyo, Japan. Rock Nestor was the main attraction, but the match was the highlight of the day was Kevin Owens vs Finn Balor for the NXT Championship. Owens was the vicious heel champion that did not care about tradition as he threw the bouquet of flowers out of the ring before the match started. Balor was the major star in NJPW, so this was the homecoming for him in a sense. KO trolled John Cena by using the five knuckle shuffle and attitude adjustment. Kevin also copied Cena's You Can't See Me by telling Finn You Can't Beat Me. Owens brought the intensity with the physicality, but Baylor did not give up. Finn countered the pop-up power bomb with the lariat after taking down the champ with two drop kicks. Baylor finished the match with a coup de grace, top rope double stomp for the win and the NXT championship. Number 82, Triple H vs. The Rock ladder match for WWF Intercontinental Championship SummerSlam 1998. After WrestleMania 14, there was a changing of the guard for two of the best fractions in the WWF. The Rock became the leader of the Nation of Domination, while Triple H became the leader of D-Generation X. From that point, DX and Nod feuded like gangs fighting over territory. It was a war that became one of the highlights of the Attitude Era next to Austin 316. The alpha male leaders of each group feuded over the second richest prize in the company, the Intercontinental title. They settled their feud in a ladder match for the IC title in SummerSlam. This was not a typical Shawn Michaels vs. Razor Raymond ladder match where you see the high flying acrobatics of HBK vs. the power of aggressiveness of Razor. Instead, you had two warriors who were identical in size and strength. It was a pure brawl that included the latter. Their personal hatred was on display in this match. The fans could feel the story that they told. Helmsley would defeat the Brahma Bull thanks to the low blow from China to become the new IC champion. Number 81, Ricky Steamboat vs. Rick Rude, 30-minute Ironman Challenge, Beach Blast 1992. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Ravishing Rick Rude battled each other in one of the greatest tests in stamina in all wrestling, an Iron Man match. However, instead of going full hour like Flair vs. Steamboat, Clash of Champions 6, and Brett vs. HBK WrestleMania 12, Steamboat and Rude went for half an hour, ravaging Rick and the advantage planned out, as he gained a 3-1 lead in the first 10 minutes of the match to make things out of reach. Steamboat had other plans in mind. With his will to win as he tied the match at 3-3 at, with 10 minutes left, after reversing a sleeper hold into a pin, Steamboat took the lead and the win as time expired. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the latest news from Fox Sports 1340 AM and 96.9 FM.